what do you think would have happened to the previous Mike Chang if you continued? Where do you think everything would be now? Um, personally, I think I would have. Hey Insider, I'm back with another interview and this one is a deep one and you will see what I mean in a moment. It's featuring a guy called Mike Chang who's most renowned for finding a company called Six Pack Shortcuts. And in my early 20s, this was one of the biggest companies out there in the fitness space. In fact, I remember going onto YouTube and I would see this guy with his top off every single day, right? He was literally everywhere. And I'll be honest, I was a little bit reluctant in terms of inviting this guy when I had the opportunity because of his past and some of the negative things that some of the people have said. But one thing I believe I believe is never about who you've been, is all about who you're becoming and who you decide to transform yourself into. Because this guy has been through one hell of a transformation, taking his company to millions of dollars, then burning himself out, then literally getting himself offline off all social media platforms for several years to discover himself. And in this interview, he shares some of the deep insights in regards to what he discovered about himself from creating a successful business, getting himself to that level where he had to just disconnect and what he learned from that whole journey is a very deep interview. You'll definitely enjoy it. And if you'd like to listen to this on your phone, on a podcast, I'll leave a link in the description box below and you can go head on over to our podcast as I've uploaded it over on there as well. Or you can simply put this into your browser, which is www.successinsider.tv forward slash mic. And you'll be able to listen to the podcast version of this episode. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed interviewing this guy. And without further ado, here's the interview featuring Mike Chan. Uh, just tell us your backstory in regards to how you got yourself to where you are today, what's been some of the hurdles along the way and so forth. Cool. Um, well, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the short version. So this one, I'll... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me put this one on. So, um, you know, basically, uh, most, people are, most people know me through uh, fitness, you know, as a six-pack guy, working out, teach people about about uh, you know, how to get abs and how to get in shape and basically some mindset training, you know? And, um, and uh, the company's name was Six Pack Shortcuts, now Six Pack Abs, the YouTube channel. And uh, so did that for, for a long time, uh, for about six, uh, six years or so, and I uh, helped a lot of people. And that's where most people know me. A little bit about background, uh, you know, grew up in Houston and, uh, you know, just, uh, just always wanted to, to to do something big in life and uh, you know, start my own business. I was always into fitness. And so fast forward, uh, fast forward a little bit later now, uh, I've taken some time off and I really had a chance to go ahead and do some introspection work. And, um, and now I'm learning a lot more about the body beyond, you know, just aesthetics and uh, now diving more into mind more into how to be, uh, how to have more joy in life, how to have more fulfillment in life and things like that. And so now, uh, now I'm coming back out to go and share more about those things. And I found out that there's actually a lot of interrelatedness between health and fitness on just bodybuilding and exercise and actually mindsets and how to be able to be successful in creating what we want. There's actually a very big connection between the two and it took me a little while to really dive in to find out more so that's kind of like a 30,000 feet overview <laughs> of, of what I did and, and what I'm doing now nice and I think that would be awesome to cover later on in terms of that uh, but first you were mentioning that you wanted to do something big earlier on in your life and uh, am I right in saying at the age of 14 that you started is it the fitness the fitness stuff going to the gym and I've yeah. heard you were also involved with knocking on doors. Is that true? The sales stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did, uh, I did door-door sales. I uh, started when I was 14 years old. And, that uh, takes a lot of guts, right? 14. What, what made you think that's what I want to do? Because normally, isn't it like the paper round sort of deal? <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, so we were selling like newspaper subscriptions. And the reason I got into it was because my sister was working for the company and it was easy for me to get a job there. Plus, I mean, honestly, they're just hiring anybody off the street that, that, uh, 
wanted to give it a shot. Turnover rate was really high. Um, and it was one of the best jobs that I've ever had because it allowed me to be able to uh, learn how to talk to people. And, uh, and I was scared as hell, you know, <laughs> when I first started, it was, it was terrifying. It was terrifying and I was terrible at it. And uh, just a lot of practice, you know, at the end of the six years of working with that company, I could talk to anybody at any point and be able to basically, you know, direct the conversation in any way, you know, and it was just from a lot of years of practice. So it was such a really great learning experience, you know, it just kind of took off, took my, uh, took my, my soon to be career and just kind of pointed towards a direction, which was ultimately in, uh, in sales and, um, um, just working directly with people, you know, uh, you know, in, uh, in person. Nice. So after that, you were involved with uh, launching. Uh, I've heard that you failed in some businesses and eventually one really took off, which was six pack shortcuts. Um, mm -hmm. What was it that you believe? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people have got passion, especially to fitness nowadays. What do you believe was your almost secret or whatever it may be the habit you had that made you really made this business really take off in terms of internal? How were you approaching it? mindset wise what was it that you did differently because a lot of people do fail in launching businesses yeah yeah that's a good question tim um you know going into that business i had i had no prior background in uh, in online marketing i to be honest just didn't like to use the computer i was more of uh, talk in person uh, you know, I like to move around, uh, use my body. And, uh, and what, really, what really drove the success was the belief that it can be done and that whatever I want to do, I can create it. And the only thing that is, um, that is the variable was time, you know, and that was it. Whatever I wanted to do, I can do. The only variable is time and, and it didn't matter what it was at that point. It was building a fitness company and in the future, whatever it is, it can be done. And it's, and it's wrapping my head around that belief. And I learned it when I was 22, when I watched first watched the secret, the law of attraction. And, you know, I never, and a lot of people have heard of it now. And, you know, what I took from it was really just that. You know, I did some tests when I first watched it and, and the results were positive, which made me realize this is not just some hocus pocus, you know, mindset thing. No, this is like real shit. You know, this is actually happening. And so that was really what I took to it. And what actually happened in the most practical matters was we didn't know what the heck we were really doing. You know, YouTube, you, using YouTube as marketing was very, very new. And there was no model to follow. And all we did was just work really, really hard and just continuously try things. And if it worked, we continued it. And if it didn't work, we scrapped it. And when people used to ask me, you know, the same question, you know, what, what would be your key point, your key um, uh, elements to succeed? I would just tell people, honestly, we just outworked everybody. That's it. There was no, there was no magic formula. We literally just outworked them. You know, we worked so hard and we grinded out so many hours that even if we screwed up const constantly, it gave us that much data and we knew that these things didn't work. And the more things we knew about that didn't work, it narrowed the things that did work. And it was just really simple, you know, and there wasn't any really magic formula after that. And yeah, looking back, um, that was that all had to do with just the mindset of believing that we can do it. And uh, one more, one other thing: um, a lot of people when they're when they're going into a business venture like this, it takes a lot of money. Um, it takes a lot of risk, right? People got to leave uh, secure jobs. Sometimes people got to move, you know, and sometimes people got to, you know, they got to sacrifice a lot. And so, one thing that I that I realized was because I sacrificed a lot, man. Like I was in real estate before, be right before that. I had about, oh, here goes the kitty. <laughs> I 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for making your round. <laughs> I had like sixty thousand dollars of credit card debt, along with over three hundred thousand in mortgages. And my monthly budget, my monthly expense was like ten thousand dollars just to cover things. It wasn't even including like food, you know, just like basic stuff. And all this was piled up. And when I started that business, I had to make a really big decision to either let everything go and pursue this business or try to hold on to it and let this, let this business opportunity pass me by. And that weighed in even more because now if I fail, I'm also basically letting everything go at the same time. So I fail with also really big debt on my back. And I realized, you know what, if I fail, my credit is shot. I have mountains of debt, but I can always walk into any place, get a job. Three weeks later, I have a paycheck and, you know, I would get my own place then. And until then, I can just sleep on somebody's couch. And so therefore, everything is still okay. That's the worst case scenario. But the best case scenario is I succeed and everything is great. And so that was the mindset that I took, you know. Wow. And was it just kind of like first year it took off or was there big hurdles in the first couple of years of the launching the business? Uh, it was hurdles at every step of the way. Even, even six years in, there were still hurdles. I mean, it was, the hurdles never stopped, to be honest. Um, a lot of people think once you, um, once you have traction that it's smooth, smooth sailing. But the thing is, the, um, the hurdles just change. You, know, and you have startup hurdles you know, in your first year or second year. Um, but then the problems change, they evolve, you know, and so you're not dealing with, with old problems, you're dealing with new problems now, you know, um, so it never really stopped. And because we never done any of the stuff that we were doing, so every step was new. I was um, running departments that I've never ran before, I never even know anything about. I remember, here's an example, it was an interesting one. Um, we had a phone team, you know, and we had about, we were growing really, really aggressively. And uh, at that point, I think we were at about 40 people and, um, and we were hitting hard. I gave them really, really high quotas to hit and they were doing their best to hit it. And then and over time, you know, we had some really good numbers. And then I found out that there was a whole bunch of fraud going on the back end. I'm like, damn, you know, I knew it was too good to be true. You know, it's like, okay, well, what to do now? You know, it was all this fraud. So I'm like, okay. So we fired like two thirds of all the phone team. We were down to like 12 people. I mean, just a straight up clean house. And we started a department, a QA department, quality assurance, you know, and they started to monitor all the phone team stuff. And we didn't know about any of this stuff. Somebody suggested, I didn't know how it would work. I'd never been involved in anything like that. But we built that department and started it up. And before you know it, we started having standard operating procedures for all of that and all this stuff. And, you know, it's just a great learning experience, but it just, it's just an example of, of, um, a lot of things are really just logic there. There's no, a lot of people are kind of looking this, looking for this, the right way to do it. And I always tell people the right way to do it is when whatever you're doing is solving the problem. That's it. You know, and it might be the rookie way. It might be the slow way. It might be the dumb way. It might be the hard way, but it solved the problem. And as, as time goes on, if it wasn't the best way, the way becomes better. And now you're doing it in a better way, in a better way. But the, the most important thing is we have a problem and it needs to be solved and just solve it. It doesn't matter how you do it, just solve it. Same thing like, like when business starts, you need to get a sale. So what do you do? Get a sale. How do you do it? It doesn't matter. Go knock on a door, go talk to a person, go solicit online, go make a phone call. You need to make a sale. You make the sales. You know, there's, there's no no complications behind it. And then that sales strategy evolves and becomes more sophisticated over time. You know? So you said when you started that company, you weren't, you was quite new to the world of online marketing. Yeah. Wow. Entirely. And so you just learned it as you went along sort of thing, or you just winged it nah. or did you have a mentor or what, what, what did that look like? Shoot, I, I, I wish I can give myself that much credit. No, man, that would have been, <laughs> if I, uh, I had, uh, I had a partner that were, was familiar with online marketing. Oh, and okay. Yeah, yeah. If, if it wasn't for him, <laughs> I, I would have took the same advice, but it would have been like, oh man, much, much, much. Um, yeah, so no, um, my partner, Dan, 
he was familiar with online marketing and uh, he's never, he's never built a company that, that grew as much as we did. Uh, but there was enough experience for him to have a, have a system of, okay, here's what we do. You know, let's try it this way, this way, and this way. And it was only one perspective, one style, you know, kind of a one trick pony. But again, it was enough to get things off the ground, you know? And so I was very fortunate you know, to find, to find somebody like him. And that was another thing was, um, you know, going off to like Henry Ford, you know, you can, you don't need to know everything. You just need to find the right people. And, um, I knew that it was really important that I was to have a partner like him. And if I missed that window of opportunity, you know, I didn't know when the next one's going to come and I didn't want to take the chance. And so I just risked, risked it all and just went for it, you know? So when so, you were running this company, was it just kind of like you, you didn't have a nine to five job. It was just all in, just committed to it. Straight up, man. All, all in. I was hustling training on the side. You know, wow. training people at the apartment, you know, where I was at. And we ran the company out of my bedroom, you know, <laughs> just, just, yeah. I mean, it was crazy time. It was a really crazy time. You know, um, it was just me and him. And then when I hired the first guy, the first guy would show up and we were partying like four nights out of the week while we're running this company, starting it up. You know, we wake up around, uh, around 11, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, work till about 9 p.m., party till about four to five o'clock a.m. and then sleep until 11 and repeat four nights out of the week. And so we have red solo cups everywhere. My guy would come in, you know, he would be knocking on the door when he'd show up. He would see he was doing custom service and there would be <laughs> random people laying on the couches, <laughs> you know, drinks everywhere. And sometimes we wouldn't even answer the door because we're still drunk or hung over and he'd be sitting outside, you know, by the back, you know, just close enough to the building so he can pick up on the internet answering some some cs tickets and uh that was a it was a crazy time you know the first about the first uh year and a half yeah wow it, it, you know it's crazy because because i remember my my first time i ever come across you was on a youtube ad and you were one of the like the original like guys i would say who really leveraged youtube ad onto a whole nother level I mean, because it's like, was it seven or eight years ago? I remember I was seeing, yeah. um, I was seeing your ads and it's just everywhere. It was just everywhere. I mean, people, especially, you know, Asians, right? Or into Asians, they just, yeah. they, will, they were all familiar with Mike Chang because you were just flooding our YouTube channels, right? Just always on yeah. the front. And um, I remember that's when I was just like, I suppose you make an assumption. You're like, oh, this guy probably knows what he's doing. It's probably all okay in terms of, um, you know, it's a big office or whatever. You just picture everything, but I didn't picture you know, startup, little startup, starting in a bedroom, whatever. You're, in terms of spokesperson, though, you've really seemed like you knew what you're doing. Was it something you practiced, like communication skills-wise? Because your sales skills was on point and communication, you seem really confident. Have you always been like that? Or is that a skill you've really built up over time? Uh, built it up. You know, that, that first sales job um, was kind of the launching pad for it. And... Um, and besides that, uh, you know, all these years in sales has, has taught me about how to be able to deliver, you know, and how to, how to speak in a way to, to, to capture attention, things like that. Um, besides that, the fact that I've been exercising for a long time also gave me a lot of confidence in the things that I talked about, you know. So a lot of people are kind of like, so I feel like they'll, they're trying to learn something and then regurgitate it and then deliver it. But for me, it's like I, I lived it. And because I lived it, it was a lot more natural, you know, and that really made a big difference um, um, in the form of our, what I call our, our organic videos. Because we basically had two different styles of videos. We had the marketing ones, the commercials, um, and then we had our organic ones that were just um, the ones that I created and the other ones were copywriters and all this stuff, you know, that's standing in front of a green screen or a teleprompter. Um, and both of them, one was, was a lot of sales skills, you know, and delivering teleprompter style, things like that. And the other one was just based on me having a lot of knowledge and fitness. And so I was able to deliver in a way that, that uh, allowed people to relate, you know. So in terms of when I search for Mike Chang nowadays, I've noticed the upload. I mean, it's, you haven't uploaded for a long time, right? Yeah. You have gone <laughs> actually off the grid. Um, and oh, you were yeah. saying earlier, you've been doing some 
uh, I don't know, searching inside and so forth. So what was the, what was the thing that made you think you want to do that in terms of just going off social media and so forth? Man. So I, uh, I haven't posted like a, like a YouTube video in like two years. And honestly, just, um, just like maybe a week, week and a half ago, I put my first post on, on social media, on Instagram. And uh, it's ironic, but I'm not much of a social media person. You know, I tell people all the time, like, you know, like real shit, you know, like when I use social media, it was MySpace. When Facebook came around, I didn't, I didn't like, I can count how many Facebook posts I personally posted. Um, and so, so basically about, uh, um, about four years ago, um, this is an interesting story. I want to make sure it's a, uh, capture the essence of it. Um, so company was doing pretty good. You know, we were, we were hitting, we were increasing in revenue every single year, you know, by roughly about, about 15%, you know, 15 to 20% increase year after year consistently. The team was expanding. We were growing out of offices all the time. And we were just in the process of moving into a 25,000 square feet office. You know, we were, we were in a 60, like a 6,500 square feet. And I remember at the time I'm here doing, dealing with all the contractors, all the build outs and all this stuff. And we had this big plan, you know, like we were going to hit some really, really big numbers. And so on the outside, everything is kind of going the way that, that I would want it to go. And people would ask me like, Hey, you know, are you, are you happy? Is everything good? And it's like, Oh yeah, everything's great. You know, I've, I've got my dream job. I get to walk around and hang around a whole bunch of fitness people and talk about something I'm passionate about. This isn't just doing it for the money. Money's there, but no, I mean, I've been, this is like my passion, you know, and I've got everything else that most people would want, you know, possessions, good body, girlfriend, friends. So on the outside, everything was cool. And I did it because I wanted to be happy. And so part of the part of the videos was teaching people how to create a life so this way they can be happy. And I and I've seen some of your stuff and and I know you have the same philosophy. It's like we do this because we want people to to be happy and so have them design a life that make them happy. So now fast forward, I go to this event in Utah and it was the date. I always forget. I always remember the date. It was February 2nd, 2015. I experienced something that changed my life forever. And, and the, the, the simplified way to, to explain this is, is um, one night it had to do with some psychedelic mushrooms, number one. Got to throw that in. Um, some MDMA, some Molly, a.k.a. Molly. Um, that was my first time taking those two, you know, I never wanted to mess with that stuff, you know, smoke bud. Yeah, that's fine. You know, drinking. Yeah. Okay. But psychedelics, I always stayed away from it. You know, my dad had schizophrenia growing up. So I was like, I wanted to keep my mind attacked and intact and, and all that. But I decided to that night and through, through sharing stories with people, I experienced this, um, this situation to where I was able to step outside of my own identity and to be able to see my entire life and how it was created. Like how my personality was created, all the values that I had, all my goals, what was the drivers behind my goals? What was the reasons behind my fear? What, like all of these big things that make up a personality, that make up an identity of a person. I was looking at it like just in my mind. And I realized at the end, I realized that this idea of who I was was just basically all made up, straight up. It was all made up. I could have made up something else based on looking at a, a life event in a different situation and different light, and everything would have been different. And so, so when this, when this, as this was happening, I experienced traumatic changes in my mind and in my body. And it wasn't just like a mindset shift. No, no. It was like, for example, here's, a, here's one. You know, people have mind chatter. And mm -hmm. some people have mind chatter so much that they literally can't even sleep, right? And they can't, they can't stop it. That's why they smoke bud. That's why they drink. That's why they have to do something just to go ahead and shut it off. It's too crazy. I had the same thing. Mine was bad, really bad. 
And I didn't think anything of it because how many, how often do people walk around going, yo, bro, how's your mind chatter going today? My shit can't stop, right? <laughs> it's just like, nobody even talks about it. It's just, just how it is. Well, mine was really bad. And when this happened, all of my mind chatter stopped. And it was just like silence. And, I, and when that happened, I was, my mind expanded. It was like, it was like my mind just upgrading like a computer. Like it just increased in like a thousand terabytes of RAM. Like I went from barely able to create, be creative or understand complex things, which is strange for me, but yet it was happening because I just had too much stuff running in my mind to suddenly when that shut off, it's like my mind's capacity just went through the roof. And I'm like looking around going, holy shit, is this happening to other people? Like, I know I just took mushrooms, you know, hours ago, but so did everybody else. This wasn't just me. Like there are 80 people and over half of people were on psychedelics. You know, is this happening to everybody else? And nobody was looking at me like shit was all crazy, you know? So I realized this was only happening to me. Changes in my body, like my body became very, very light. Like I was literally like feeling like I was floating and I'm very aware of the way my body feels, you know, because of these years of, of training, I was like, something is different of my body. Why is my body feeling so light? Like literally like I'm walking on a cloud. My arms felt light. My arms don't feel light. They feel like slabs of meat, you know, my back felt light. It's like, what's going on? And the way and the best thing, oh, here's another one. I had extreme pain in my back like a really bad one, that was a bad injury that was in my lower back on my right side that traveled, the pain traveled to my, to my upper, my lower front abdominal. And it was just like a stabbing pain every single day, like a knife stabbing. And I was able to take a lot of pain because of all these years of training my body. But this one was, was over the top. And it was there for eight months and I couldn't get rid of it. And I didn't know why, because I've, I've messed up my body countless times so having an injury is like having a paper cut it's like being sore when you work out no big deal you know you just fix it here's what you do boom 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 it's done but this one wouldn't go away and when this thing happened that injury disappeared like in the course of six hours i couldn't get rid of it no matter what i did in eight months and in six hours it was gone and the best thing was like when we talk about you know trying to be happy suddenly the level of happiness that I was feeling in my body, it was like, it was so high. I did not even know that it existed. I did not know that I could be that happy. And I didn't even know what was happening besides the fact that I felt so good that in reference to the way I felt before was pain. And it's crazy. It's like, it's like you ask somebody like, how do you feel? And it's like, they go, I feel normal. Yeah, I feel good. And yet, yeah, yet, like, you know, a day later, they feel so good that the day before was pain. It's like, you must have really felt that good for you to say that your normal is now painful. And yet, this is what I was experiencing. And I realized how dark of a hole I was in. And it's like, suddenly, I was able to see the light, I was able to come out. And at that point, I realized that all these things that I was doing in my life to try to achieve this happiness, money, women, body, respect, and, and the material stuff, and just all of these things that I were chasing got me to a certain level of happiness. And suddenly, what, whatever just happened blew this level by light years so far that it made that last level feel like I never wanted to go back ever again. And I realized that in that case, it had nothing to do with any of these things. There's nothing changed in my business or my external life. This was just a course of six hours. And so I decided at that point, two things. Number one is I don't give a shit about any of these things anymore. Because if my goal is happiness, and suddenly, I don't know what I just did, but my happiness just went through the roof. And it had nothing to do with this stuff. So... If I have to, I will sacrifice every single one of these components in my life. Because what I'm really after is being happy and feeling the happiness. And what, I'm, what, was, what I was experiencing at that time was just, just insane. And I will give up everything if that's what it takes to hold on to whatever it is that I was feeling. And I was telling this to people out loud. I was like, man, I will just sleep on somebody's couch. I will give up everything I got. And if I can hold on to the way I feel right now, shit, life is freaking amazing. 
And the second thing was, I am going to find out exactly what is happening to me because I have no idea. And I'm going to go ahead and show other people because people want to feel this, you know, like people want to feel this. And if they, and I don't think people have ever felt this. Most people have, haven't because they have, they would be talking about it. This won't just be something they're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep this to myself. No, they're going to tell everybody, holy shit, man. Have you ever felt like da, 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 da. And nobody, I never talked to anybody that, have these type of experiences. So I knew that there wasn't a lot of people that have ever experienced what I'm experiencing. And I want to learn what happens. So this way, everybody can experience it because they need to experience that. Because when they do, it's the best feeling ever. And it's like, there's nothing at that point that could top it. And to be honest, there hasn't been a lot of, a lot of states that have topped it. There's been a few now because that was almost four years ago. In the last four years, this is exactly what I did. And that's to answer your, your, uh, to answer your question and long-winded answer. This is why I fell off the grid because I realized, fuck the grid and fuck all that stuff. What I, what I accidentally stumbled on is what is the best thing that can ever happen to any human. And I'm going to, no matter if it takes everything I got, I'm going to find out and learn what the hell was happening because it's that good. And now, four years later, I know. <laughs> and, and it's like, and it's so, it's complex, but yet it's, it can be simplified. And when I look around, I realize people are looking at it. They're all looking at it, but there are so many deeper layers of this information, you know? But people are all looking at it because the world is starting to shift. We are starting to see people that care more about impact than they do about money. This is a new era. 10 years ago, that's not the case. Now it is the case, you know? So people are already looking at this stuff and it's just now what I did was I had the opportunity to go deeper, to go deeper than a lot of people. Cause honestly, after I sold my company, I had a little bit of savings, you know? So it allowed me to go full time into finding out more about this stuff. And so I was very fortunate. So now I'm, now that I'm out, I'm, I'm wanting, I'm, I'm prepping to share it. And I want to share it in a way to where people are able to understand it. They're able to actually apply and experience these things, you know? And yeah, so, so that's what's going on. Wow. What, what you just shared there, firstly, is really beautiful. But secondly, I think it's going to require some level of awareness to really absorb. Um, and I think I appreciate, firstly, you opening up in regards to that uh, because I mean, that's speaking your truth right there in terms of some of the, I can resonate with some of the things you're saying because I've been on, um, uh, I suppose, some journeys before. But, uh, wow, I, I, I had no idea. I had no idea this is what I was going to hear. <laughs> right, so for the last uh, three to four years then, when did you know it was the right time to come back? Because you say you wasn't, the biggest fan of social media. So why didn't you just stay off it? Or is there a shift you've had in regards to that that made you want to come back? Um, I debated a lot, you know, I had, I had the time to, and I debated a lot on whether or not to, to uh, come back into social media, come back into the public eye, you know, versus just, I can do, I, I can do so many other businesses that are much more low key, much more easier, much more automated, and, and kind of sit back as like more like an investor and a consultant and just let money flow in and, and be okay with that. And the reason why is because I realized two things. Number one, people need to, need to hear about this information. And there are a lot of great um, teachers out there that are teaching these things, you know, already. It's, it's out there. Um, but more can be done. And the belief that one person can make a big difference, you know, I truly believe that. And so when I see myself as like, why do I want to come out there? I know that myself can make a big difference in the world, you know? And the second reason is I want to be able to create a lifestyle to where I am continuously motivated to, um, to go deeper and deeper and learn more about what I've already learned in this area. And, and one of the best ways to do so is to be in that field, to have a business around helping people with that. 
And it only makes sense that it would be able to feed my own personal journey. And so therefore, it wasn't a choice of this, this route being the most, um, um, you know, making the most amount of money or having the most amount of success. There was so many opportunities. And actually, even now as we speak, there are opportunities that I'm about to turn down that would involve a lot more money and a lot of a lot more easier time of making you know, success and things like that. But I realized like at the end, if I follow, if I follow something, if I do something that helps other people and help myself, I can't, I can't lose because people are being lifted. My life is improving and whether or not it's a lot of money or some money or a little bit of money, that's irrelevant because money, I, I know now from direct experience that money will not make me happier, nor would it improve my life, you know? And, but doing this type of business can, and it will directly feed into my life. It will directly feed into everybody that's around me. And all of those things are more important. And that's what made me really come out and decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to just go all in like I did last time before. And, um, there was something else that you, that you asked why, um, what made me decide, like I'm, what made me realize that I'm ready now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you look at some of my videos about two years ago, I, I started uh, making some videos and then I just dropped off <laughs> straight up. <laughs> right. Like I, was, I was like, okay, Hey, it's about empowerment. It's about this. It's only I'm out. So what happened then was I, I had enough information to share, but I did not feel that my personal, um, my personal experience and I wasn't able to practice on a deep enough level about the things that I was able to talk about. And I felt like, in other words, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. You know, I was, I'm a really, really, I live by the statement of be the change that you want to see in the world, you know? And before when I ran my fitness business, it was the same type of mentality. You know, like everybody around the office worked out, had pull-up bars and, and, and food, fitness, you know, like clean food everywhere. You know, I mean, it was just people were, were, were living this culture. And I made sure of it, you know, mandatory workouts for all of my salespeople, 10 minutes every morning. I mean, there's just all these setups that allow people to have this really, really fit lifestyle. And so when it came to this stuff, you know, I'm sharing people about how to let go of this, how to overcome that. And in my personal life, you know, I was going through a roller coaster. There were good times and there were bad times. And I realized, like, man, it's not that I can't share more stuff, but I need, I need to go ahead and get my life in a better situation before I feel, feel like I am, like I'm not compromising my own values. And so I waited another two years, you know, and dived in a lot more. And now, now that I'm coming out, there are, I, I find that not only is my life a lot more different, I am a lot more liberated than I was two years ago. And in a lot of ways, you know, and, um, but also there are some, there are some strong foundational information that we as people um, have that allow us to make decisions, you know, and some of the big decisions require deep foundational stuff. And, and some of the questions that I was asking, you know, are like very, very, um, um, they're controversial stuff like what is the purpose of life? You know, what is God? You know, a lot of those type of questions and I won't dive into it now, but I have, I have certain answers now for even questions like that. And it's not really just to share with other people. It's more just for myself. So this way I know how to make the right decisions because the last thing I wanted to do was to come back out and build a successful company and repeat what I did before. Because I can easily do that without even trying. But to create a different life and to create a different and different outcome and to be a different person, that takes work. That takes a lot of conscious awareness. That takes a lot of changes on a deep fundamental level. And, and I wanted to make sure that I was ready for that. If not, I'd rather just stay back and just be out of sight and be off grid. I'd rather do that than go and re recreate the exact same thing. Because then I would have felt like the last four years would have been a waste, you know. 
In terms of how you are now and how you used to be, I mean, in terms of the way the energy feels, it's a little, it's, it's significantly different. Do you, do you ever look back at your past videos and just observe? Like, what, what do you normally see when you do that? <laughs> and, um, you were bigger back then as well, right? I, I think. Yeah. I had a look at yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Um, there was like a, um, won't be like, there was a lot more, um, a lot more nervousness and and it's like um, what would be like the right way to things didn't think information didn't flow out it appeared to be because I'm, I'm good in sales i'm good at delivering things you know but it didn't have this natural calm flow to information that was that would be delivered it was like it was more like a force. It was more like pushing it out. It was more like just, just driving it out, but it wasn't this letting it flow out. So when I speak, you know, it wasn't as, it didn't, it didn't come out as natural, you know, versus, uh, versus now it's a lot more easier. And, and primarily this is because working out is working out and being healthy on the outside is one thing. But when we look into the energetics of our of, of the inside of our body, or in other words, how our body feels, whether or not we feel calm, or do or whether or not we feel you know nervousness, whether or not we feel tense, or whether or not we feel relaxed, you know, angry or or, or joy, I was driven by anger before and driven by fear, and I was very aware of it but I didn't think anything was wrong. And when I watch like YouTube videos now and I hear people talk about it, I'm like, damn, man, I can't even blame them because that's what I, I did that for most of my life. You know, people are like, you know, sometimes you gotta get angry. You know, you gotta, you gotta use that anger as your fuel. You know, you gotta think about your family. And if you don't do this, your family are gonna freaking suffer and use that as, and I get it. <laughs> I get it, I, I did that. They don't realize like yes it will allow them to accomplish you know whatever they need to i mean that is going to happen but what they don't realize is what happens when they use this type of energy to to take action they don't realize that their body is and their body and their mind is is completely taken over and influenced by this type of energy by anger by fear and by lack and it doesn't matter whether or not they succeed in something or not. Their body is always in this fight or flight type of response. You know, it's always this nervousness and this anxiety and all this stuff. And then people got to do all these things to try to let it go. You know, smoking, drinking, but excess of this and that, you know, and their mind is always like stop, nonstop judging, nonstop worry, nonstop everything. And the people don't look at that enough. They just look at the outcome and they see that somebody has a big following. Somebody has a big bank account. You know, they have nice clothes and cars. Everything is good. They don't realize how, how brittle and how much suffering is actually going on with the person behind the scenes. And that's part of it is because of this fuel of anger that's, that's being used. And that's what I did for the longest time. And now I, I realize and I want to show people that, you don't need to use that. That will work, but there are a lot of negative consequences that is going to happen. And if your goal in doing all this stuff is to create happiness and joy and fulfillment in your life, you are never going to receive that, not by using anger and fear as your driver. You know? You've totally reinvented yourself in a way. It's, um, I, I, I do feel very, very different and there are very big things and very small things from washing dishes. I wash dishes differently now. <laughs> I, I walk different. Um, I sit different, you know, I, my hand mannerisms are different. Um, I wear different clothes, you know, before I was always wearing, um, wearing black, white, gray, blue, you know. And now, like, I've got, I've got colors, <laughs> you know, 
it is a lot of it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of things that are very are very different and you know and people want to you know people always say they want to change their life you know they want to create these things that they haven't created but they're they they need to realize that if they want to change a little bit of things in their life they need to change a little bit of themselves but some people that want to change completely their life they need to completely change themselves and some people think what that is is just like I'm just going to I'm going to go from lazy and not feel like working to really really motivating and working but it's not just that there are so many other things that they need to change in order to create the type of life that they're seeing online or that they look up to you know and that's basically what I've what I've been working on and continuously do you know and evolving myself more and more and it's it's worth it it's worth it and it's so different than it was there are things that I've done over the past two years that I would have never thought I could do. And the thing is, I had more money, more network, more everything years ago than I do now. But yet I've done more now than I did before. And some people go, well, it's because you have more time. It's not because I just have more time. That while well, the time is true, but it's because the box that I created in my head I was, I'm been able to break down a lot of that box and I can't say that it is not there anymore, but a lot of it has been broken down, which allows me to go ahead and let go of control and to do things without worrying about what the outcome could be or to do things and not think about like, Hey, you know, does this have a direct um, connection to my, to my goal? And if it doesn't, I shouldn't waste my time. You know, it's like, no, if that was the case, that means I only value anything that has to do with business, work and success. And everybody that heard about the line, you know, some of the best things in life are free and everybody can agree. But yet when people are actually taking action, they don't value those things. And they don't realize that because they don't value those things, they're missing out on their, on their ability to be fulfilled. Like people don't think about if fulfillment means I have to make a lot of money, well, we all know that making a lot of money ain't easy. And even people who made a lot of money, still, it's like, it, it takes a lot of work. And if that's the only way to be fulfilled, then you're looking at a lot of work for the rest of your life. And not just, and because you don't just make a lot of money like every single day, you're hitting things. It's like, no, you work, you hit this goal and you celebrate. And then afterwards you go through a certain other time period of hitting another goal. And so if you're hitting four or five goals in a year, you got all this space in between that you're just keeping your head down and grinding it out. And if people aren't fulfilled with appreciating and thankful for the small things, they don't have an opportunity to, to actually think happy thoughts, actually be thankful because they're only thankful and only appreciative when they are hitting these big goals. And so that mindset by itself, is a mindset that doesn't allow people to be fulfilled. And so not being enough people are, are looking at these things. Everybody is just looking at what it takes to be successful. And at some point they will realize once people reach a level of success, they'll realize that, oh, either there are two things. Wow, um, this doesn't make me fulfilled and happy. I need to go and start to look for purpose and all this stuff. And then they start to go into spirituality. Or they go, I just need to hit another level of success. <laughs> You know, so. What do you think would have happened to the previous Mike Chang if you continued? Where do you think everything would be now? Um, personally, I think I would have, I mean, if, if I never experienced that, probably more um, my mental health would have, would have went down, would have went down further. People, people wouldn't have been able to tell, you know, my body would have been the same, you know? So if somebody looks at your body, they look at your money, they look at your followers, they go, ding, it's all good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but you know, I, I think it would have went down more and more. And, um, and as, as, who knows, maybe I would have went into, into substance abuses, you know, at the time already, you know, I was messing around, like, I didn't want to do any of the hardcore stuff. Well, I'm not gonna do that stuff. You know what I did? Here, check this out. 
So I smoked, you know, I smoked bud. Okay, cool. You know, a lot of people did, no big deal. But what I did was I went ahead and used a lot of my supplements as, as ways to help me party. <laughs> like I would, I, seriously, I didn't do Coke. No, I don't want to mess with that. No, instead I took a pre-workout <laughs> and then I combined it with a sleep supplement. You know what you do when you combine the two? One is an upper, one is a downer, right? You got a little bit of that. You insert some bud into it, and then you got a party already before anything has even started. And then if I did have one drink or two drinks, game over. You know, so I was doing stuff like that. And, and it's like, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm taking things that are healthy. Smoking bud, I don't smoke cigarettes. So, oh, okay, smoking bud is okay. And these supplements, oh, people take these supplements all the time, you know? And so I was justifying. But what I wasn't looking at was, why do I need so much stuff in order for me to have fun, in order for me to relax, you know? And so, yeah, man, I, maybe I would have went further down that. Um, I think at some point I probably would have, would have, you know, had a cleanse and really, really take some time off and evaluate. And maybe I would have discovered what I did, you know, mm. uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> the reason why I'm asking is, uh, some of our uh, followers, they, they run the pattern of the hustle, and the work and uh, yeah. finances is a big drive for a lot of people that I personally know also. And burnout and all of that is very common. So they're probably listening to this resonating a lot with what you're saying. What advice would you have to those people who are running that pattern? Because they're probably thinking, I can't take four years out of my life, right? And go on this journey and do all of this. So exactly. what, what advice would you give to these people who are running these big businesses and they're just frying themselves out silly? So there is a temporary band-aid that they can do. And then there's the actual longevity solution. The temporary band-aid is this burnout is a combination of their mind and their body, their mind constantly racing. They can't seem to shut it up. It's always worried about this, worried about that, thinking about this appointment, thinking about this goal, just nonstop chattering, you know, and what they, what they want to do is they want to shh, and give, give themselves a, you know, a time of silence for a while. So that's the goal. I'll talk about how to do it in just a sec. With the body, what they want to do is their body is feeling anxiety. Their body is feeling nervous. Their body, they, can, they sometimes could have these little shakes inside. They're shaking their leg. They're clamping, you know, all this type of weird things, you know, because their body just doesn't feel good. And when they tighten up and things like that, they're tightening up so this way they don't feel the discomfort. And they don't feel the suffering and the pain that's actually happening in the body or they drink and do a lot of the substance stuff. So they want their body to feel relaxed and to have their body feel calm. So that's where they want to get to. So a temporary solution to do that is this. For the body part, they need to stretch every single day, not anything hardcore, because I know I'm, I'm probably not talking to a whole bunch of fitness fanatics. So I'm talking about like five minutes, five minutes of stretching. You know, and broken down specifically like this, 10 sets of 30 seconds each. That's five minutes. What stretches you want to do for those 10, those 10 stretches, you know, honestly, whatever stretch you want. And you know, I can sit there and show you some basic ones, but most people know how to stretch. Doesn't matter if you're flexible or not flexible, find your 10 favorite stretches and do them 30 seconds each. Boom. You got five minutes, right? What that does is that starts to release a lot of the tension in the body and that starts to help the body relax, you know? And during that time of stretching, take advantage of breathing, <sighs> you know, just follow the breath. So this way you're not stretching and thinking about what you got to, you know, what email to send out later on. No, no, like stretch, be present and breathe, you know, just breathe while you're stretching. Then after you're done with that, you know, then the next five minutes, go ahead and actually do a breathing exercise. And one simple one, anybody can do this. Here's all you do. Breathe in and out 30 times, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Take a deep breath through your nose and then just relax out through your mouth. So you're not exhaling everything, you're just exhaling naturally. But your deep breath is, is everything you got. Right, 30 times. And then at the end of the 30 times, 
exhale all of your breath and then just relax. Yeah. And then when you got to breathe in, you know, breathe in, but just hold it as long as you can, you know, and when you do breathe in, you know, go ahead and breathe in and hold it for about 15 seconds. And then now you're done with that one set. So just do that once you can do more, but let's just, you know, let's give them small bites, do that once. And after that, you got your little phone timer, set up, hit five minutes on the timer and just sit there and meditate. The breathing, doing it beforehand would help the mind and the body relax even more, even deeper. And it will be perfect. Uh, now they create the perfect state in order to go deeper and a little more easier in meditation. So when you look at the time for all of this, five minutes of stretching, but you know, doing that one set will probably take maybe two minutes. You know? So they're looking at about 12 minutes. So they want to do this every single morning when they wake up. Every single morning when they wake up. Don't check the phone, don't do any of that stuff. Just morning when you wake up and then they do that. If they are feeling burnt out throughout the day, they can even do this you know, throughout the day. You know? And because it only takes about 12 minutes or so, but it will reset their body and it will reset their mind. It'll reset the body and the body will feel relaxed from all the you know, uncomfortableness that's accumulating. And then also the racing mind would have a chance to slow down. Because see, our mind is never meant to go ahead and just be stagnant and not have any thoughts because then we can't create, you know, and we can't function. But what we need to do, and just like in business, you know, business does this, right? It's not ever like that. We wish, right? It's always like this, just mm -hmm. like economy, just like everything is up and down, up and down. And our mind is the same way. Thoughts, a lot of thoughts, and then we need to shut them down. A lot of thoughts, we need to shut them down. And if we keep doing this, we have balance, right? But what happens is when people aren't doing that, they're doing this <laughs> with their thoughts and they never shut it down. And so doing this throughout the day just allows them to do this with their mind and also with their body, same way. Their body gets tense and stressed and then they shut it down. So that's what I recommend, you know? And when they have more time, they're more committed. And when they start to, you know, start to see a lot of experience, uh, benefits in it, they can dive in deeper and there's a lot of stuff that I'll be showing and there's a lot of stuff that's out there. You know, I always tell people, you know, yeah, my stuff works. You know, I've, I've, I've tested it. I've proven it with a lot of different people, but it's not about like, Hey, you know, get my stuff or use my stuff. No, just, just go and do it. Just there's tons of information out there and there are information that works for different people. And for me, I like to go with the approach of using my, using my body as a way to, uh, to, to improve the mind. You know, and for some people, they do it a little differently, but just find a way to do it and don't just put it under the rug, you know. Okay, sounds great. So to yeah. start um, wrapping up, um, Mike, I think I'm curious to know, since is it like only in the last two weeks you have come back, did you say, in the last two weeks? Yeah. It's very, very recent. So uh, firstly, I'm very fortunate to have you uh, on today since um, I assume you've not had have you got a lot of interviews lined up now or is it just, am I the first since you come back? I'm curious to know. Um, I've only done um, one, only one, only one before this. Wow, um, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, uh, there's a lot of things that I've been wanting to do um, um, when it comes to, when it comes to like creating content and things like that. So um, I wasn't much of a hurry. Mm. I'm really glad you reached out to me, man. You've been, uh, you've been reaching out to me for a little while. And the last yeah. time you did, I was like, it's, <laughs> it's time, man. I want to, I want to chat with Tim. He's been a busy man. You know, I've been, I've been watching your, watching your career, you know, from afar. And uh, yeah, man, I'm really excited for it. You know, you've been, you've been working hard. You've got really great messages. You're helping a lot of people, you know, your success is, is building more and more and more, you know? And uh, so, so congrats, man. I'm happy for you. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, this is why I wanted to bring you on. You know, a lot of uh, insiders were reaching out because you're from an Asian background as well. We reach out to a lot of Asians. Um, yeah. You know, they were curious to know more about you. And I'm curious to know what, what does the future look like in terms of uh, wh where do you think you'll be in like a year's time in terms of what, um, what your channel will be? Or I, I take it you're going to be establishing yourself now or are you just still... What's the plans, basically, moving forwards? Uh, so... So on the business end, you know, my plan is to go ahead and 
I'm creating a new type of program, you know, one that's going to be helping people with mindset. But the approach is basically through the body and the mind. And because everybody is just only through the mind and it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You know, the way our body, our body influences our mind. So if we don't, if we don't let go of all the traumas and all the energetic blockages and all these things going on in the body, we're, we're basically not doing half of what is needed, you know? So, so basically I'm showing people how to go ahead and change their mind sense and program their mind through two roads, both mind and body, you know? Um, and so that's going to be on Instagram. that will be on YouTube. Um, I don't know about all the channels yet. I haven't even gotten that far. I had to learn about how to use Instagram. Oh, Instagram stories. You know, <laughs> hey, that, that wasn't around back in the day. Let me see how this stuff works. I mean, that's like where I'm at. You know, like I said, I don't use social media. So I have to go and play with things like that, figure out the new apps that are out. All the stuff that, you know, people that use social media are they're pretty familiar with. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. But ultimately, um, my vision for it, though, is to have online courses so this way people are able to access it everywhere i am going to put together live workshops this way i can have deeper um, deeper engagements with people and be able to answer questions right on the spot and to be able to to facilitate on a much you know on a much closer level um and uh on top of that i want to i'm going to be traveling i'm continuously traveling right now but i'm going to travel more and i want to dive in and and learn from masters and experts that are that have figured these things out a long time ago but unfortunately they're not marketers they're not business people they you know they have their little communities but the knowledge and the expertise that they have about the human body and mind is so far past what most people will know and, and what's even available online you know and i want to go to these places and learn from them and help find a way to help them get their information out because a lot of people either they're passionate about business or they're passionate about some other field and a lot of times it's hard to find somebody that has both and i want to be able to talk to these people that are really passionate about these things so this way i can learn personally for myself and just get the knowledge out there you know so this way more knowledge is available for for people to to, you know, to dive in more into this stuff Sounds wow. incredible. So if people want to go, uh, I suppose, check you out after this, where's the best place for them to go? Uh, for now, I would say just uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm posting content and um, eventually it'll be in other places. Uh, my Instagram handle is Mike Chain Official. And, okay, so you're um, not back on YouTube just yet? Not yet. Soon. Not yet. You know, okay. Soon. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So Wish who knows? Good. Maybe by the time they watch this video, maybe I'll start to have some videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, uh, yeah, for me, it's not about, uh, you know, I haven't created this whole big marketing strategy and all this stuff. You know, I'm more of just, I'm more of, uh, letting going with the flow more. It's like, you know, letting it, letting it grow without having so much, uh, so much pressure, so much crazy deadlines and, you know, having fun with it. You know? Sounds so. great. If you were to summarize, um, a lot of the things that you covered today with just one simple message, like a sentence or whatever. So everyone just can just remember one thing from this interview. What would it be, Mike, for you? Um, one simple thing, huh? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, usually I'll say something, you know, um, some type of quote or something, but in actuality, you know, here's something that's probably more powerful and probably more, um, more useful. Every successful person has a morning ritual, a morning habit, a morning routine of some sort, you know, and that's important because that sets them up for the day. And so the one thing is have a morning ritual every single morning. If you have a lot of time, your morning ritual could be an hour. And if you don't have a lot of time, your morning ritual could be as little as five minutes or like the advice I was saying, about 12 minutes, you know, but have that because that is going to set anybody up for the rest of the day. It makes such a big difference. It makes such a big difference. 
And particularly what needs to happen in the, in the morning ritual is two things. Something that is for the body, move the body in some way, and something that's for the mind. You know, either to silence the mind down or a little bit of reading, but it needs to hit both of them, you know, and have that every single morning. And that's always going to set somebody up for success. Nice. Thank you so much, Mike, once again, for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Inside, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you found this interview valuable. If you have, be sure to comment below in regards to the biggest takeaway. And like this video if you like this video. And as always, inside, I follow your heart, my friend, and take action and go live the life you're truly born to live. I'll see you very soon on the next video.